Hey guys, Scott Poley here. I am a session guitarist, pedal steel player. I also produce and write music. And welcome to part two of the great Harley Benton experiment. If you've seen part one, you will know that I bought a 30 pound Harley Benton Stratocaster used. It's a, a budget version of a, a Fender Strat style guitar. And it was already really pretty damn good when I bought it. But in this video, I'm gonna take it to my favorite guitar repairman, Phil Orm, and we're gonna do actually a series of videos because he's given so many great tips and tricks. This one is really the inspection of the guitar and just kind of looking over it to see what can be done to improve the guitar. In this video, Phil's gonna give you some great tips about maintaining and looking after your guitar and what to look out for if you're interested in buying a new guitar as well. So let's go and see Phil. Well, okay, so the, the, basically we're gonna start off, there's, uh, there's three or four um, sort of key elements. We need to check the relief of the neck and we can use a, a straight line. Of course, the easiest straight line is the string itself. So fretting on the first and roughly about the 14th or where the neck joint is. And then just gonna tap around the seventh, between the seventh and eighth fret to see how much relief, how much space is um, between the string and the fret. And there seems to be a little bit too much. You want, you know, maybe about eight or 10,000. So that looks a bit more than that, which we'll check in a minute properly. This is just a, the initial sort of a quick check. Uh, sighting straight down on the guitar, the neck set angle doesn't look quite right to me. It looks over, over set, kind of sticking out slightly. So again, we can just, just see where my rules are, but in a minute I'll find a rule, a straight edge, and lay it across the frets. And it should really be just sitting at the takeoff point. If it's below that, then the neck set angle is set too much. So, uh, so we'll need to shim the underside of the neck just to straighten that a little bit. I was looking at the radius just before, and I've just checked this with an understring radius gauge, and it's reading. I mean, it's, you know, it's not super expensive Fender or Gibson or something, so they're not always 100% accurate right across, but I'd say it's a 10 inch radius. Yeah. I don't know what the, the website for this is. I mean, normally strats, you know, they're gonna be nine and a half, or some of the old ones, maybe seven and a quarter. Now, because of that, the bridge saddles should actually read the same radius. They should be a 10 inch radius as well. So if I slip the under saddle string gauge and you can see it's rocking like crazy. So it's not touching the strings on the outside ones. The D and the G are, are touching, so it's too flat. And that means the curvature of these- It's, bits, not, matching yeah, the it's not matching the fingerboard. So it's too low in the middle, which could cause some buzzing and choking. Now I know you mentioned there was a couple of fret issues. It could be a couple of high frets. Yeah. That they are really sharp fret ends actually. That's And that's um, quite a common thing on the cheaper guitars, isn't it? It's just- it, It's not just on the, on the cheaper guitars. A lot of, the problem is a lot of guitars come out of the factory um, and they're kind of set up a little high. You've got to understand these things are shipped from, from abroad. They're going to go through lots of different temperature changes. So the last thing the companies like Fender or Gibson are going to want is a guitar. Because a lot of shops now, they don't have a luthier. They don't have anybody setting the guitars up. They take them out of the boxes. They tune them up and put them on the wall. Now, if you pick up a 2,000-man guitar and it starts buzzing and choking, it's not going to be very good, is it? You know, you're thinking, hang on a minute, this is, I might not buy this. So if they set everything a little higher than it should be, a little bit more relief, the idea is you go, oh, yeah, it's, it's great, needs setting up. So you'd take it to a luthier or somebody who's going to set the guitar up properly now. The likes of Harley Benton, really well-made guitars for the money. They're not going to get somebody to set them up properly. They're just going to be sort of mass-produced and sent out and expect things like the nut heights, you know, the sharp fret ends, the radius, the neck set angle, all that sort of thing is going to be left to, to somebody like myself to be able to, to tweak these to make them play properly. So, <laughs> funnily enough, talking about being able to, to read the fingerboard, this is something anybody can do. They can take a, a straight edge, and I've just used one of these um, the sort of handheld tools that you, the little wheels you can, you can get attachments for, and I've notched this not for this this is um, a different scale not straight edges look like this the ones for a fender and they fit over the fret they fit basically. over the fret so i can so the problem is normally is you're reading the tops of the frets yeah. and not the fingerboard whereas this allows you to read the actual fingerboard if you can get right down there you can see how much uh, the straight edge is sitting off the actual fingerboard there's a big gap but at the ends, it's touching the fingerboard at each end, and in the middle is this massive gap. That's telling me that basically there's too much relief. You you want less less curve. Yeah. 
If you think it, when they talk about relief, all the time, if this is the fingerboard, the string action, when you put strings on the guitar, it pulls the neck, like a, imagine it was a bow and arrow, you know, and, and you've got the string here. So as you put a string and tighten it up, it's going to pull the neck yeah. into relief. Uh, and this is an up bow. And then the truss rod, which is this hole here, which allows you to adjust the, the metal rod that runs through the neck, yeah. counters that string tension to straighten the neck. And that you either have it completely flat, if it's completely fat, the, the strings in the middle are going to buzz. So you need a little bit of relief to allow the string, which which moves in an, an, an elliptical fashion. When you pluck a string, it's doing that. It's not just going up and down. It's kind of moving elliptically. So you've got to give it the clearance. Now on a Fender, it's normally sort of eight to ten thousandths. This is one of the weird things with luthiers, by the way. They talk about millimeters and thousandths of an inch. So what you get sometimes, if the strings are, are, are touching the frets and it's just you, it's killed the strings when you pluck it, it's just dead. It could be in a back bow. The string tension is not enough for the amount of a truss rod tension that's been yeah. put on, and it's pull the neck into a back back bow which means all the strings are touching in the middle and there's gaps at either side so we're after an optimal relief in the guitar and as i say on a strat it all depends on the radius this is a, a nine and a half ten inch radius on something like a gibson or a jackson or you know uh, something that's got a much flatter radius you know 12 16 inch 20 inch radius yeah. you can have the neck much flatter um, and less relief and and it not choke yes because you haven't got the same radius it's so it, you're looking at a compromise. It's always most of the companies, the likes of Fender and Gibson, will have online. They'll have a list of information. Uh, but all these things, you, the, you know, there's a there's a trade off. Unfortunately, with not just with cheaper guitars, but if you imagine if you've got quite a, a, um, a quite a lot of space between the string and the fingerboard or the frets. It's not going to pick up all those problems. So the action's high, so it's a bit harder to play, but you don't get those choking problems, the buzzing problems that you would with a lower action. As soon as you get below, you know, 1.8, 1.6 millimeters at the 12th, it's going to pick up any problems on the fingerboard. If you've got any high frets, any twists or undulations on the board, anything at all is going to be picked up by a low action. So some people come in, they want it, they've got a cheap guitar, they want a low action. And then you've got to go, well, actually, I'm going to have to glue all the frets in because they're not, they need to be reset. Yep. And then got to go level the frets. I've got to recrown and polish them. I've got to put a new nut in. I've got to do this. And the bill's worth twice what they need to pay for the guitar. Fender recommend um, for a Strat would be like 1.6 millimeters at the 12th, which is, you know, reasonably low action. Um, I, I mean, I know like you play more like, like me, like a two millimeter because A, you get a better tone. And and also you get less problems, especially when you're touring, when you're gaining, you're giving hot to cold and hot to cold, and the necks are moving and twisting. If you've got a low action, all those issues are going to start. And this is the other thing people don't realise. You know, they come in and they may have had a set of nines on the guitar, and they then bought a set of tens, and all of a sudden the action's massive at the twelfth fret, and they're thinking, well, why? Yeah. It's because you've got 180, 200 pound of string tension now pulling on it. Yeah. So it's pulling into back to that thing about the relief. So again, you need to adjust the trusser then to pull back against it. When you get the guitar, first of all, sight down on the neck and have a look at the, the action. I can see that's really high. I'm going to take a quick measurement. This is just a, a string action gauge. Yep. So you have all the little um, marks there, and, and this is in millimetres. So if I put that on the 12th fret, and I'm reading from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret, and that's reading, that's about two and a half mil. So that's quite high. That's about a millimetre, and a millimetre is a lot in guitar. And again, on the E string, that's about two millimetres, so it's kind of curving off slightly. If the neck's at angle, and I'm talking about the angle where it attaches to the body is wrong, sometimes they're that way, sometimes they're this way. But with a bolt-on, um, it's, it's a lot easier, because what we can do is we can shim the neck. So if I look at this, you can see where the, the bottom of that uh, corner of that ruler and i know there's still quite a lot of relief in here so it's not 100 percent accurate but it is just for for a rough sort of guide see where it's hitting Hit this corner the bottom corner i don't know if you can get in close enough to see that if i lift it it should be roughly just around about the takeoff point now that's quite a lot lower isn't it yeah so the neck is actually sitting like that so we're gonna have to shim the neck straighter so i can then make the smaller adjustments with the saddle screws 
So that's the first thing. Look and see that the next set angle, because sometimes, you know, you take the saddles down as low as they'll go, and these are quite low already, and there's still the action's still too high. So you look at that, you'd look at the if this is a this is a 10-inch radius. So again, we did that before. That the thing you do then is check to see if if the saddles match uh, the radius of the finger, which they don't. No. So that'll cause problems. So that would mean we need to raise the middle saddles, which we'll do. Uh, check the height of the pickups. If you fret at the very last fret, uh, and then measure the height from the base side, it's roughly about two and a half mil to the actual pole piece, and then to two mil on the treble. If they're too close, they can mess with the intonation because the pull of the magnets can pull it out of tune slightly. So again, you might not always get the intonation. Uh, and for those that don't know about intonation, it's if you play an open chord, say on the second fret of D, and it's in tune, and then you played it on the 14th, and it's really, I'm bending at the minute just to, to make, you know, the, the but if it's really out of tune, then it's the intonation. Yeah, uh, but of course you can never, never do the intonation without a brand new set of strings. If you try and do it with an, even if they're a week old, and you set it, it'll, you put a new set of strings, it'll be all out again. So a brand new set of strings do the intonation, yeah. and then in future, once it's perfect, when you're playing, if it starts going out of tune, you know it's the strings. The intonation and, on the strings has gone. And what gauge of strings should you be using for a guitar like this? Well, again, this this is down to preference, uh, personal choice. The two, the, the kind of the two sets or the two gauges that that for a Strat style guitar are uh, nine to forty two or ten to forty six. Yeah, will be the two sort of standard gauges. And then obviously you have people that go hybrid strings, which are a mix of the nines and the tens. Some have I use balance tension where the, the gauges are slightly different in the middle. Yeah. To, but you know that's So we're gonna set this up with ten to forty sixes because that's kind of a standard gauge it's, for something like and this. It, and it also helps that the neck is quite it moves quite a bit. If you have very little truss rod tension to get the relief and you're playing on stage and the next move and it's all out of tune. So if you've have to if you put a higher gauge of strings on, you have to crank the truss rod tension down a bit more. It makes the neck more stable. So you actually get less movement and it's actually better for 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 tuning stability, yeah. better tone. There's all sorts of uh, uh but yeah, so we're gonna set it up with 10 to 46s. I'm gonna cheat because I do, you know, normally uh, I think uh, most most people have probably one of these knocking around um obviously you can you can take the wind the tuner down by hand or you can use one of these but when you're doing 400 guitars a day then i've just got this attachment and to be honest with you when the strings are completely wet i take enough tension off so it's not going to shock the guitar so it's just taking just loosen it a little bit just so it's not yeah, so this is all now pretty loose and i'm just going to cut them off and what's your opinion, Phil, about not having strings on a guitar for, you know, in terms of the tension on the neck? Right, okay. Well, a lot of people think that's an absolute no-no, or people will try and store a guitar with no strings. Or uh, No, and I get all that, but, you know, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors of this, and you get people that swear blind that it makes a, a difference. I've been doing this a long time. Um, and the only time it's going to make a difference if you leave, like for this, for a start, you know, if you want to clean up the frets and you want to clean up the board and condition the board, you've got to do it with the strings off. Now, as soon as I take the strings off, the, the truss rod tension is actually going to start pulling the neck into a back bow. But there's, there's, the truss rods aren't that big and the wood is quite tough. It's not going to happen in 10, 15, 20 minutes. But in this scenario where the strings are off, they're going to be off for, you know, five minutes. In this case, because we're video, it may be 10, 15 minutes or something. Well, I wouldn't worry so much. By the way, if anybody wants any serious, uh, serious amounts of luthier tips, anybody getting into this, uh, check out on on YouTube a guy called Dan Earlywine, who's my uh, luthier hero. Uh, absolute, the guy is a is an absolute god in the uh, guitar repair world. He's been around forever, and half the tools we use, I think he's designed most of them. Frank Ford as well. Um, I think it's frets.net or frets.com. Yeah, Griffin Strings Ford. Instruments. Yeah, yeah, there's a few, but Dan Earlywine, if Dan Earlywine says, then it is. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you got value out of this video, I would love it if you consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, ring the bell icon, and it will let you know when I release new videos, which I do every single week.